Hmm. Well, let's see what we do here. This helps. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think we are live now. Say something. Okay. Okay. So we're live. Good. All right. Now, I'm John Pritchett. Got a little something here typed up just so I'll stay on track. Uh, I'm Mr. Pritchett, instructor of Bio 210. Uh, this semester, spring 2021, Ms. Patty Taylor or Mr. Mark Davis is going to be your uh, lab instructor. And they'll be in touch with you in terms of uh, how that lab is going to work. Uh, the lecture component is an asynchronous course, which means that there's no special time for um, us to meet. Now, the lab instructors may do something differently, and that's fine. But um, <clears throat> as far as I'm concerned, uh, I'll be producing PowerPoints, I'll be producing uh, videos, and you'll have a Word document. And so uh, that will, I think, suffice in terms of giving you the content that you that you want. Let's see if we can get that down just a little bit more. You've got to look right in the camera, else it looks like I'm looking at the floor here. Anyway, um, I said I'll be making YouTube videos. Hopefully those will explain some things. Uh, Zoom PowerPoints, and you guys will have those in your uh, weekly packets of information. So, um, Along with that, I'll send a Word document, and the Word document will could be anywhere from 10 to 15, 16, 18 pages, depending on the content in the chapters. But uh, I'll send that to you, and you will uh, have a written component in terms of what I want you to know in the uh, textbook. Some of you will use a hard copy of the textbook. You like having the book, and I understand that. I do, too while others of, you, others of you will be using an e-text. The e-text is fine, nothing wrong with that. The, probably the biggest um, struggle people have is the page numbers of the hard text are different from the page numbers of the e-text. Now, when you get the Word document for Chapter 1, you will see how I have set that up. So I'll have, for instance, on a page, I'll have P, and it'll say 11, and then I'll have a parenthesis, and in that parenthesis, I might have 8, E8. And so the, the first part, which is page 11, that would be in a hard copy, and then the parenthesis would be the page in the e-text. So uh, you can probably find it by content, but that hopefully will make it a little bit easier for you to enjoy and uh, use the Word document and your e-text. Let's see, when you, when you enter D2L, and of course you will do that tomorrow sometime, tomorrow morning or whatever, you'll be on the home page. And I've written something down here, I wanna make sure I get it all the way through to you. The menu runs across the page, the top of the page. You'll have things like honor lock and content and so forth and quizzes. And there is explanation within the system. Excuse me, that's the printer going, readjusting itself. Anyway, um, so I want you to go to um, content, and I want you to uh, click on content on that menu, and you'll have another menu that shows up on the left side of your page. Um, locate the section on the left that says welcome and information. It's amazing how many people will not read that section. It has everything that you need to know in terms of when exams are going to be given, uh, what chapters are covered, and so forth. 
um, the honor lock agreement. There are several documents you have to sign and drop in the uh, drop box. So you want to make sure you do that and get that to me. And take care of signing those documents as soon as possible, ASAP. A lot of information there that you need to know. And if you know it, then you have a sense of, okay, I know where I'm going. It's kind of like following a map and you won't be quite so uh, uptight about things. Anatomy is not an easy course. It's another language which you will have to learn since you're going into radiology and maybe into uh, nursing or maybe some of you are doing a PA or what they call a nurse practitioner or whatever. But it's going to become your language. So you got to talk the talk just like I do. But as we go through this, I hope you're going to enjoy it. We live in an amazing structure that is so complex, but so ordered and so purposeful. I always get uh, a thrill, I guess you'd say, uh, a moment of amazement how from one little cell, trillions of cells come and differentiate into cells that will produce hair or cells that will pick up light or cells that will be in your fingertips so that you um, know you're touching something and you've got pain receptors and so forth in there. It's tremendously organized. And I'm going to get excited during the course of the semester as I talk to you because I like this stuff. I've been doing it 45 years and I have not tired of it. Do I get tired? Yeah, sure, I get tired. But it's an amazing thing that we're working on and how we're learning about things in the body and we can help people. And that's what you folks want to do. You want to help people. So in order to help them, it's kind of like a mechanic. You've got to know the guts of a car before you can help somebody who's stranded on the road. The same thing is true with the human body. And so I'm going to give you some information that you will build on in the next semester when you take Bio 211, and then you get to take microbiology. I've taught that for about 25 years, and I guess get, I get excited about it. And guess what? I get, to pay, I get paid for it. Isn't that great? When you get a job that you enjoy going to and you've got group, a good group of people to walk, work with and you get paid for it, that's hard to be. There are a lot of people who go to work and they don't like a thing they do. But I like this. And I hope you're going to like nursing or whatever medical aspect of that profession is um, going to be your, uh, your goal. So, when you want to see a video or look at a Word document, you'll want to go to content and then come down that uh, scroll on the left, that menu on the left, and you want to click on what says Bio 210 Lecture. And what, what you'll see after you click on that is you'll see weeks, week one, week two, week three, week four. And those are like, if you want to say envelopes, you can say pockets or whatever they call them up in computer language, fo folders or something like that. But I'll have something in e each of those. And so uh, pockets, and that's what you're going to be studying that week. Now, uh, I've already put in some information in there in terms of uh, welcome to the course. As I said, it is not an easy course. It's not a cakewalk. Lots of uh, language you've got to learn, but you've also got to know where that language is present in the human body. So it's, it's like a map and you want, or a neighborhood, and you want to find out all the um, organs within in there and the various components of the organs. So you click on the specific week and in the, then that uh, pocket will be uh, maybe a YouTube, like you're going to get tomorrow morning, uh, PowerPoints, Word documents, and things like that, things I've downloaded in terms of uh, um, the Internet. You know, some things uh, I go out and, and get a, a video, and it explains something that's a challenging and amazing process called protein synthesis. But there are a number of things that, that I'll do like that, so I hope it'll, it'll be a benefit to you. Now, in terms of looking at your textbook, if you have it before you, 
Um, and of course, you you might not see this live. You won't see it live, but you'll see it uh, tomorrow sometime. In your textbook, it talks about how to read a textbook. And that's in uh, the first several pages after you get past the uh, uh, the content section in the sense of, uh, well, who uh, the uh, they just give you the brief contents. You know, it's like the uh, chapters in a, in a textbook. So, but you want to, how to read the textbook. So I want you to read that and you'll notice on the next page, it'll talk about recite. Now I've already put something in, in uh, welcome and information, but you have to practice daily. You have to practice daily. When you don't do that, can you imagine an, uh, an athlete? Well, I'll practice running a mile today, but I won't do it. Uh, the next five days, because the track meets five ways, days apart. I got plenty of time. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. Recite. Talk to the, the closet door. Pretend you're the teacher. If you can do that and you can teach the material to the closet door, you're halfway there. Then you got to understand it. How do you use it? Also, uh, as, as we go over here, to about I'm in module one of the textbook and I'm in, in the textbook, I'm in page seven and I haven't done these for the e-text, but um, look for the heading that says module 1.2 and you're going to see the word overview of anatomy and physiology. So make sure that you go over that uh, cellular composition. What is metabolism and so forth on page seven, it goes over to uh, characteristics of, of living organisms. Uh, they, they excrete, they produce waste products. Uh, they grow, they respond to the environment and so forth, and they reproduce. Excuse me, that's, um, that's our back door. I mean, somebody's coming in the house. We can take a picture of them. Isn't that bad? We got to do that. You got these yahoos that want to come out and break your door in or something like that. Anyway, um, on page eight, you've got the levels of structural organization in the body. Starts out with chemicals. This body that you're looking at on the um, YouTube, it's made out of dirt. It's made out of dirt. It's amazing what God can do with dirt, isn't it? And so you've got all these chemicals that are found in the soil. You've got carbon and hydrogen and so forth and sodium. So that's your basic level, and it can even get smaller than that. But you want to know those levels of structural organization. They go from chemical to organism. So you're looking at me, and I'm an organism. I'll get to see you sometime, I hope, too. So you want to know that. And then you come over to um, types of anatomy and physiology. And just a couple of things in there. When you come down to the second paragraph, gross anatomy, that's looking at the body uh, as like a hand. And then the digits and the nails and so forth. And maybe a hair on the back of your knuckle or whatever. So that's gross anatomy, doesn't need a microscope, but then you come down to microscopic anatomy and in microscopic anatomy, you have uh, histology, which is tissues. And then you get to the level where cells make up those tissues. So that's a couple of areas that people can spend their life in because they love it. It's, it's amazing. And I hope it'll just thrill you as you go through the course, but you're going to have to work at it so you make a good grade. On page nine, you've got the uh, uh, language, module 1.3, the language of anatomy. And then they show all these folks uh, in terms of, on page uh, 10 and 11, they show uh, these systems. You want to know the systems of the body. Most of you know something about them. You've got your digestive system. You've got your nervous system and so forth. So you want to know those systems and you want to know the functions of those systems. Nothing hard about that. It's just a case of memorizing them. You, but you have to practice it. Excuse me. And then on page 12, the anatomical position and directional terms you will learn that in the lab. But as you read through the syllabus, you'll see that questions can be brought from the lab into the lecture that gets you ready for 
a final exam, which would include questions in the lab as well as in the lecture. Now I'm going to flip over to the planes of sections. And so you want to look on that particular page. They'll talk about a sagittal plane. Mid-sagittal would divide the body left and right. And then frontal. Uh, the frontal plane would be cutting it this way. So you take away the face and you can look inside the brain and the nasal passage and so forth. So you want to know those planes of sections. Nothing hard about them. It's just you got to learn them. It's part of the knowledge. And then uh, module 1.4. On page 17, it has, the or it has the organization of the human body. It talks about the cavities, like the dorsal cavity. Dorsal is going to mean toward the back. That's your skull and your vertebral column. Then you got a chest up here. They don't call it a chest. They call it a thorax. And so you've got that in front of the dorsal cavity back here and here. So that would be called a ventral cavity. And then the ventral cavity is broken into a number of sections, which I'm not going to go over with you right now. You can learn those sections as you uh, look at them this week. So let's see what else. You can read about serous membranes, not serious, okay? There's some terms that sound a lot alike, but serous membranes uh, that line our body cavities. So you want to read that section on page 19. Now, what I'd like to spend a little bit of time on, really, we've covered a lot right there, but I want to look on page 21, and um, that's probably like E15 in terms of your e-text or whatever, but it's module 1.5, and module 1.5 points out core principles in anatomy and physiology. Now, when you look at these learning object, learning outcomes, those are meant to get your attention. So as you look through the Word document, as you and I'm going to reiterate that in the document, it's like they're guideposts. So if you want to look at those learning outcomes, it's what you are supposed to get out of the chapter so that you can answer my questions on a test or use that knowledge. Uh, maybe you're a CNA or something like that. And so you you understand what somebody is saying to you or a doctor's order is or whatever. So <clears throat> one of the things that's really important, it's going to keep coming back up and up and up again. We're never going to get rid of it. The bottom of page 21, and it's in your Word document, so don't worry about that. Just as you go through there and you come to module 1.5, core principles in anatomy and physiology, then you want to uh, look at your Word document at the same time because I'm going to pick stuff out of there for you to learn. Now, the bottom of page 21, it talks about physiological processes. You know, anatomy is the structure. Physiology is the function and the activity of that structure. Physiological processes operate to maintain the body's homeostasis. You are not going to get away from that term. Homeostasis is critical in the inside of our body. And so on page 22, they will give you a definition of homeostasis. It's, it's, it's keeping the internal environment constant. Okay? If things don't get kept, if things are not kept in, uh, within a certain range, we have problems. We have problems. So, uh, homeostasis, got a lot of homeostatic mechanisms that keep the internal environment of our body within the parameters that's been set, like temperature. Don't want it to be too low. Don't want it to be too high. That can create problems in the body. So I want you to read about negative feedbacks on page 22. And you can uh, come over on the second column of page 22. And you come down that column and you see these bold print terms like stimulus and receptor and control center and effector. Now, most of you, if you if you have a little bit of knowledge about some of these terms, you 
you think, well, a receptor is going to pick up some information. That's right, like an ear, like an eye, like a taste bud. It's going to pick up some information. Uh, one of the things my family likes to do is they like to make chili. So my two grandsons and my son and I get together, and each of us has a, a job in there. We put it all together and then cook it, you know, and let it freeze and age a little bit, and it'll warm you up in a number of ways. But we all enjoy that. So our taste buds tell us, whoa, that's too many jalapenos in there. Or, oh, well, it's kind of drab. You know, we don't, we need to add some more jalapenos or habaneros or whatever to make it a little spicier. Want to get a little sweat up here, you know, and your nose starts running, your sinuses start draining. That's a good jelly. Now, some people would hate that. But the point is, you got receptors that pick up on things. And what they pick up is called a stimulus, as you see on page 22. And that receptor, what it, let's say it's our taste buds, it sends information to your brain. The brain is the control center in many of these homeostatic mechanisms. So you make a choice up here. I've had some people that try to eat my chili, and they said, man, I'm not going to eat that stuff ever again because it was just way too much for them. But some of us are built with with taste buds, they say, oh, boy, that's good stuff. That's comfort food. Really good. And so we put a little bit more in the bowl. The guy who told me, said, I'm never eating that stuff again. You know, he just pushed the bowl aside. Oh, that's horrible. Get me something to drink or wash down this stuff. It's not for everybody. You know, that's all it is. It's a, just this life. So anyway, when you look on page 23, they talk about the heat, the temperature of the body. So you look on figure 1.13, 1.13. And they give you an example of, an example of a room. Uh, you could think of your heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. You have a thermostat, which measures the temperature in your house. And you can set your heating, ventilation, and air conditioning to a particular setting in terms of temperature. And if it starts to drop, the heater cuts on. If it gets too high, the air conditioning cuts on and brings it down. But that's like a homeostatic mechanism in our body. So certain things happen, and we will talk about them a little bit later. When you get overheated from exercising, playing basketball, volleyball, or something like that, or maybe you like to walk or jog, and, you know, it's been pretty cool lately, but then if you walk mm, quickly enough and long enough, you know, you start unzipping your uh, overcoat or something, opening things up so you can get a little heat out because you're getting warmer than you want to get. Or if it gets colder, then you start bundling up. You know, maybe you put on a cap or something like that to try and retain the heat. So that's a homeostatic mechanism. We have receptors that pick up on temperature, not taste, but temperature. Send it to the brain. The brain sends a message back, and you either open your shirt up or you don't, you know, so you can get cool or whatever. So I want you to look on page 23. They give you a couple of items there that will help you understand that. You can, I want you to read about the negative feedbacks in homeostatic mechanisms. Negative feedback is not bad stuff like, oh, you're a horrible person or anything like that. We're not talking about that. We're talking about how your receptors send a message to the brain and the brain changes the stimulus. So if you're getting hot, then you open up your shirt so some heat can come out. You start to sweat. Okay, those are negative responses in the sense their negative feedbacks is that they bring the temperature back to the normal it should be. Now, if they're negative feedbacks, they're positive feedbacks. And one of the ones that's amazing to me is in the uterus, when it's pregnant, 
and the little fellow has grown, the little girl has grown, and that head is down toward the cervix and it starts to push out, that stimulates the uterus to send a message. Could be chemical, could be electrochemical. It sends a message to your brain. Your brain sends a message back down. And instead of stopping the contractions, it causes more contractions to get the kid out. That's a positive feedback. It increases the number of contractions. So we call that a positive feedback. Same thing can happen with uh, blood clotting. And you can read about blood clotting on page 24 in the textbook. Now, that's just a couple of examples, but we're going to be mentioning homeostatic mechanisms all during the semester. So learn this. So when we say, oh, calcium level in your bloodstream, that's something that we got to keep within the limits. Or the pH in the bloodstream, that's something we got to keep within certain limits or we're going to die. So you want to study about negative feedbacks? You want to study about positive feedbacks. And then you've got on page 25, you've got the core principles of how structure and function are related. I want you to read that. Structure and function are related. One of the examples they give you is how thin the little um, sacs in your lung are so that diffusion can take place. You can read about that. Nothing real heavy, but if you have questions, then you can certainly uh, call me up or you can um, write me an email or whatever. And let's see, on page 26, it talks about gradients. A gradient, well, we get the word grade, and we, there's a couple of ways you can use a grade. You know, you're looking for a good grade, I hope. And I would love to see all of you make B or A above. But a grade can also be an incline. We say, well, there's a steep grade there. You'll see that sometimes on the highway. If you go to North Carolina on I-26, and you'll see these um, signs that say 7% grade. That means the road, the road is not flat. The road's going up. Or if you're coming the other way, it's going down. So they give you the definition for a gradient. It's a little elusive in terms of grasping it, but it says a gradient is present anytime more of something exists in one area than another, and the two areas are connected. Now, if you look on page 27, it's pretty easy to see that. They've got a heater. It's hot by the heater. But you get 10, 15 feet away, and it's not as hot. That is a gradient in terms of temperature. Hot here, less hot over here. That's a type of gradient. And then a second gradient, excuse me, a second example of a gradient on page 27 is a chemical gradient. Some of you like um, sweet tea and you put sugar in your tea. And how many of you have noticed a lot of times it stays on the bottom of the glass? It takes a while for the sugar to dissolve. So there's a strong a concentration of sugar at the bottom of the tea. There's less at the top. That's a gradient because the bottom and the top are connected to each other, aren't they? That's a gradient. And then you have over here on the right-hand side, you see the term pressure gradient. Pressure gradients are important. Pressure is what moves the blood through the blood vessels. It'll be high up here. It'll be lower out here. The farther away you get from the heart, the lower the pressure. That's a gradient. But we need a gradient in order to move the blood from the right side of the heart, left side of the heart, excuse me, to the body, and then gradually get it back up to the right side. But the blood moves because there is a difference in pressure. Okay. Now we got one more thing I want to cover with you. And I want you to, that's a, this is in chapter one, page 27. It talks about 
cell communication is required to coordinate body functions. Cell communication. Cells talk to each other. Even bacterial cells talk to each other. That blows my mind. That means there's some kind of intelligence in those little guys. It's fascinating. We used to want to kill them all. Now they're putting them in your um, kombucha tea. You guys ever drink kombucha tea? It's got a yeast in it called Saccharomyces boulardii. And it can talk to other cells. They communicate with each other. But our cells work together. Whether they're muscle cells and nerve cells and brain cells, they all work together for the, the, the uh, welfare of the body. Okay, now we've gone 30 minutes here and we have just finished chapter one. Now in the Word document that you're going to get, uh, you are, um, you're going to uh, have to answer some questions here on page 29. It says, assess what you have learned and it's level one. And I've, I've chosen some questions there for you to fill out. Some of those questions might show up on the uh, exam. You want to pass it? Learn those questions. Okay. Now, I want to close it now. I'll have another video on probably the, on the chemistry of life, which is chapter two. That's amazing also because we keep discovering things inside a chemical, an atom, and then electrons and neutrons, and then smaller particles within there called quarks and whatever. How, when does this stop? We don't know. But anyway, we'll try to get to We'll get to We will get to that a little bit later in the week. Anyway, y'all have a good evening. And uh, if you have questions, shoot me an email or whatever. I'm going to stop this video and um, I I'll put it in there tomorrow morning. They don't let you put it in right now. I'm not sure why. Maybe they want to make sure that I'm not trying to overthrow the country or anything like that. But got to be careful now, nowadays. All right. I'll see you folks later.